Well, good morning, guys. Great to be with you this morning. It's a beautiful day, 10 o'clock, Wednesday morning, and I'm so glad to be with you. I uh, would much rather, again, be with you in person, but I will be, I am thankful for this opportunity in this form and fashion. Again, looking forward to when we can be together. I love you guys, appreciate every one of you, and just trust that your week has been going well. Uh, I do want to remind all of you guys that this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. Who don't forget that. Uh, make sure you honor your mother or your wife. Absolutely don't uh, wait till 10 o'clock Saturday night to try to get something. Stores close early, guys, so just keep that in mind. Uh, make sure you uh, 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 express your uh, thanks and appreciation and honor those ladies who mean so very much to you. So uh, just uh, keep that in mind. So let's pray and we will jump into our study this morning. Father, once again, I thank you for a great morning. Thank you for my brothers here today and I pray, Lord, that you will use this uh, devotion this morning to just speak to the hearts of your men. I pray these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen. The uh, uh, title of my uh, devotion this morning is uh, wearing your life vest, wearing your life vest. And I, I just wanna say, don't be in the water, guys, when your life vest is in the boat. Think about that for just a minute. Don't be in the water when your life vest is in the boat. You need assurance, assurance that your life vest is gonna bring you, especially in times like these. I ran across a very interesting story and I thought, you know, I'm just gonna share this and just uh, m maybe some of you have heard this or even heard the account, it's a true story and I love, uh, I love true stories and this uh, I think will just kind of resonate and minister to you here today. Um, on the night and early morning of August 8th and 9th, 1942, the life of 19-year-old signalman, third class Elgin Staples of Akron, Ohio, was saved by someone over 8,000 miles away. Serving aboard the cruiser USS Astoria in support of the landings on Guadalcanal, Staples and his crewmates suddenly found themselves illuminated by spotlight and under attack by a force of the Japanese cruisers north of Sabo Island. At approximately 0200 hours, the Astoria's number one eight-inch turret was hit and exploded, sweeping Signalman Staples into the air and overboard. Signalman Staples, dazed and wounded in his leg by shrapnel, kept afloat thanks to an inflatable rubber life belt he had donned shortly before the explosion. At approximately 0600, Staples, along with other survivors, were rescued by the destroyer USS Bagley and returned to assist the Astoria, which was heavily damaged, but attempting to beach itself in the shallow waters off Guadalcanal. These efforts failed, as Astoria took on a dangerous list before finally sinking at approximately 1,200 hours, putting Staples back into the water, still wearing the same life belt. Rescued a second time by the transport USS President Jackson, Signalman Staples was evacuated to Nomia in New Caledonia uh, before given leave to return home. It was while on board the President Jackson that Staples first examined the life belt which had saved him closely, which had saved him closely and were surprised to find that it had been manufactured in his hometown of Akron, Ohio by the Firestone Tire and Rubber Company. It he also noticed an unusual set of numbers staple, stamped on the belt. Returning home to Akron, Signalman Staples uh, thought to bring along the life belt that had saved him to show his family. After a quiet, quietly emotional welcome, I sat with my mother in our kitchen, telling her about my recent ordeal and hearing what had happened at home since I had gone away. My mother informed me that 
to do her part, she had gotten a wartime job at the Firestone plant. Surprised, he jumped up and grabbing his life belt from the duffel bag, he put it on the table in front of her. Take a look at that, Mom, I said. It was made right here in Akron at your plant. She leaned forward and taking the rubber belt in her hands, she read the label. She had just heard the story and knew that in the darkness of that terrible night, it was this one piece of rubber that had saved his life. When she looked up at me, her mouth and her eyes were open wide with surprise. Son, I am the inspector at the Firestone plant. This is my inspector number. Whoa. I don't know about you, but boy, that just brings goosebumps. Uh, I would imagine that that is a mother that was so thankful that when she inspected that one life belt that she made sure that it was doing what it should do. So anyway, I just thought that was just a cool story and the fact, especially as a, a coming up for Mother's Day. But uh, so when, when we think about security, let me ask you a question. Um, is your seat belt tightened? Okay, well, Pastor Arnold, what do you mean by that? Is your seat belt tightened? Uh, is your life preserver uh, wearing, uh, holding your head above the water line uh, of this pandemic? Is it holding you up there? Uh, is, is your hope intact right now? Or has that began to waver just a little bit? as this pandemic continues on? Do you feel like the foundation under you instead of a solid foundation has all of a sudden become a sinkhole? Is that kind of where you're at this morning? Um, we counsel a lot of couples right now and individuals and there are a lot of people that are kind of going down that road right now. If you're struggling right now, um, can I give you some words of encouragement? Uh, that may enable you to kind of regain uh, your emotional and spiritual balance, if you will. Uh, first, let me tell you uh, what you must not do, okay? Let's, let's start there. Do not pin your heart and your hope on the news of, uh, that is being given to you. We are being inundated by news every day, right? Uh, sometimes it uh, becomes commonplace to check the news before you go to bed and the first thing in the morning, check the news to see what's going on. And uh, do not put your whole heart and hope in the news that you are reading. Uh, we look for direction from it, granted, I, and that's important. But since none of us uh, are totally sure of what is true right now, right? Um, or the authoritative word, if you will, if it's whether it's our governor or president or whatever, we cannot rely on it for our peace, right? We can't rely on it for peace. We can be dragged around uh, by our fear and our uncertainty uh, very easily uh, during a time like this. It's, it's like the slope under us is, is very slippery and very steep. And sometimes we struggle grabbing uh, onto anything uh, that is going to keep us from, from going over the edge. So uh, the more news we take in, um, the more uh, we discuss with our family and friends, uh, the more bickering that goes on in our minds all about this, the more all of that is going on, uh, the less calm assurance we have in our heart. Uh, there's really only one sure word that can bring back peace into all of this chaos, and you know that, and that's God's word. Amen. That's God's word. And uh, I've gone back to reading Proverbs, as Pastor John has requested that we do, reading that, uh, that chapter that corresponds to the day of uh, every day uh, for the month of May. I've also, uh, I'm reading in, in Psalms as well. All of these things, um, that is what is going to uh, keep us afloat. Uh, if you're trying to survive 
on only what people are saying. Uh, your seatbelt isn't fastened, guys. Uh, your life preserver is still in the boat and, and you're in the water. And uh, your hope offers really no security in that. And, and your foundation winds up just crumbling underneath you. So God's word is uh, for this very hour. We need God's word. Read it. Uh, let it chart your course for the day. Uh, during that time, just allow God to speak to you as you're in the word every morning because you can trust the one uh, who loved you enough to die for you. Uh, get into Psalms, get into Proverbs, uh, make sure that you are uh, taking that in and allowing it to speak to your heart. So uh, here's just a few verses to maybe jumpstart you on this. Some that, um, uh, out of, out of uh, Psalms that I love this. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. I love that. He is the guard. He is the one that is, is guarding. Psalms 23, 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Oh, he never leaves me. He never forsakes me. He is there with me at all times, even during this pandemic. In uh, Psalms 91 for, uh, verses 4 through 6, he will shield you with his wings. They will shelter you. His faithful promises are your armor. Now you don't need to be afraid of the dark anymore, for, nor fear the dangers of the day, nor dread the plagues of darkness, nor disasters in the morning. Oh my goodness, what a promise. We don't have to fear any of those things because we know who is walking with us, who is in control of all things. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with the songs of deliverance. And that's Psalms 32, seven. Will surround me with the songs of deliverance. Those are just a, just a few words this morning. Guys, just focus on that. Again, make sure you're into Proverbs, making sure you're soaking in the word, making sure that, that your life preserver is on, your seatbelt is tight, and that you are not gonna be swayed. Regardless of what the circumstances are, regardless of what the news tells us, we know, we know who is in control of all of this, amen. Bless you, my brothers, let me pray for you. Father, I thank you once again for this opportunity to meet with my brothers. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for the promise that you never leave us and nor forsake us. And Father, regardless of everything that we're going through, the circumstances that we're facing, you are with us. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. God bless you, my brothers. Love and appreciate every one of you. Stay strong, stay healthy. Hope to see you this weekend. God bless.